Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel, and I thought we'd make a video today kind of similar to the last video I made. If you look back at the last video I made, it was all about how we could potentially retire on less than a $500,000 or roughly a $500,000 portfolio. Now what we're taking a look at today is less than that. So what about a quarter million, right? And so what if we were able to scale to that point and then use the cash flow from our investments to be able to, let's say, produce a $50,000 per year income. Let's say we have no debt. Let's say we're approaching retirement age, or let's say we just you know, want to take a break from a nine to five job and we want to have something to fall back on in terms of an income source. This can be used for that type of scenario. So what we're going to be walking through today, first of all, is finding high quality dividend stocks. You know, there's a lot of companies out there. The first example here is Rio Tinto. Now I've talked about this company on the channel before. Basically, this is a mining company focused a lot on copper and other types of materials. This is a company that's paying 5.9% in terms of its dividend yield. And as you'll see, you know, the dividend yields, I believe they pay every six months or every twice a year, basically. So you'll get these cash dividend amounts. And I've seen this dividend higher and lower. One thing I always tell people is not necessarily to focus on the yield. It's tempting just to say, oh, it pays a 10%, 15% dividend yield. But the most important thing is the quality of the company, the quality of the business, and what you're actually investing in. So in this case, Rio Tinto is an international mining company that invests in you know copper mines and all kinds of stuff. And they also pay a dividend yield of 5.9%. So what we're looking at here is, first of all, a company that's very large in the multi-billions in terms of market cap. Here's a shorter-term chart for Rio Tinto. Market cap of $74.82 billion, um, income of $10.71 billion, sales of $53 billion. So this is a company that's been around for a long time. If we look at the you know chart since November of 2023, you can see down here that this is actually a solid level of support, this $60 per share level. Now, what we could also do is look down here and say, worst case, where does this go? You know, we went down to $50, $60, $59 a share. So we're kind of trending down here. And if we look at what's called a cash secured put, that's one thing that you can do, um, especially against dividend stocks. I discussed this in the last video, where what we're doing is we're actually getting paid to buy this stock. So I could take a look at Rio Tinto and I could look out to, let's say, October 18th, for example, and that's a little bit over a month out to expiration. As you're watching this video, it's probably uploaded on September 10th. And by the time October 18th rolls around, that's going to be roughly, what, five weeks? And so you could essentially assume that you're going to do this trade 10 times a year, or you're going to try to do a similar trade 10 times a year. And what I'm assuming here is that we're selling 43 contracts. Now, this is an important distinction because each options contract, whether you're doing a cash secured put, a covered call, or other types of trades. And there's information on these types of strategies in the description. If you're unfamiliar with any of this, you can check out the wheel strategy and all that kind of stuff below. But for the sake of time in this video, I just kind of want to go over the fact that when you're selling a cash secured put, when you're doing this, you're getting paid to buy the stock at an agreed upon price. That price is known as the strike price. The expiration is October 18th in this case. So we're agreeing to buy Rio Tinto at a price of $57.50 up until October 18th, 2024. Once this option expires, we are no longer on the hook. So if Rio Tinto is still trading at $59 a share, then we are not going to buy the stock. But we are, in fact, going to pocket this amount right here. Assuming we sell for $1 on this trade, the bid price of this option is $1. Our max gain before commissions is $4,300. After commissions, $4,275. So that's $27.95 in commissions. This is the amount that we're actually walking away with. Now, like I said, assuming you did this 10 times a year, and the amount of capital you'd have to put up for this trade, by the way, is 4,300 shares. Now, obviously, you're going to want to be diversified, especially when you're talking larger portfolio amounts, like a quarter million, 500,000. But for the sake of this example, if we take 4,300 times 100 is per options contract, I'm sorry, 
what did I say? 4,300 shares times the stock price of $59. Or actually, what we would do in this case is take the strike price of $57.50 since we're agreeing to buy at that price. And the total amount of capital that we have to put up for this trade is roughly $250,000. So $247,250 is the total amount. Um, and we're basically selling 4,300 you know, we're, we're basically selling this on behalf of 4,300 shares, which is the equivalent of this dollar amount due to the strike price of $57.50. So I hope that makes sense. We're agreeing to buy up until October 18th at the strike price of $57.50, 4,300 shares. So we take 43 times 100 since each options contract is worth 100 shares, which means we can sell a maximum of 43 contracts. Simply take 4,300 divided by 100, and we can sell up to 43 contracts. In this case, we can sell 43 cash secured puts. And in the process of doing that, assuming we get filled at $1 per share, we can get paid $4,300. Now, after commissions, that's $4,272. If we do that 10 times per year, you can assume that you're gonna be earning over you know, $42,000 over the course of that year. If you take a look at that relative to, let's say a quarter million dollar portfolio, if that's what you have to invest, and let's say you're doing this against multiple stocks. Once again, we're just doing this for the sake of the example to illustrate what's possible. But if we take this number here, divided by 12, we're looking at over $3,000 per month or over 100 bucks per day. So this is definitely one of those things where you can use this as an alternative income stream. Now, whether or not it's going to be enough to retire on and actually live on the income this is producing is going to be a different story altogether. You know, there's so many factors to consider. What's your strategy? What stocks you're doing this against? How many stocks? How diversified are you? Um, do you have more than a quarter million? Do you have other income sources, right? So this is just a hypothetical example. It might sound like a lot too, especially if you're just starting investing. But as you build your portfolio, you'll get closer to that goal and the idea is, you know, if we can do this and scale this against 10 or 15 high quality companies, then we can do this on a regular basis. And this is just the cash secured put side. Once we get long the stock, we can always turn around and sell a covered call. So in this case, let's say it's trading at $59 for the sake of this example. We're going to go ahead and sell a $60 strike option. We already own 4,300 shares, but now we're going to sell a $60 strike option just br briefly out of the money. But you know, what we're gonna do here is collect another $8,000. So it's gonna vary widely depending upon the strike price of the option, how close the actual stock price is to the strike price, whether you're selling a cash secured put or a covered call. So a good way to think about the cash secured put versus covered call thing is that when you're buying the stock, you're gonna be doing the cash secured put. When you're wanting to sell the stock, you're gonna get paid for selling the stock by doing a covered call. You're agreeing to sell the stock in this case at $60 a share. So 4,300 shares at $60 a share is going to be your sell price. Now remember we originally bought at $57.50, 4,300 shares. So now we're actually gonna be selling the 4,300 shares at $60. And we're basically assuming in this case that Rio Tinto went up in price. So from 59, now we're selling a 60 strike option because that actual stock price is so close to the option, we're getting $2 on the bid here for this option. Assuming we're in into this trade right now, we're looking at $8,600. And this is on October 18th is the expiration. So a little bit more than a month out. So you get the idea right? If you did 10 of these trades a year, now it's going to change drastically because of the increased, um, you know, that we're receiving. So you'd kind of average it out too. That's 85, you know, and it's going to vary widely. So we could take a look at uh, another stock that I really like is Realty Income. Now this is going to be one of those monthly dividend paying companies. They actually pride themselves as being the monthly dividend company, right? So if we take a look at this stock, it's been up uh, actually quite a decent amount since November, all the way trading down to 45 and now we're at 62. Okay. So if we look at the dividends here, we also have a nice solid dividend yield. And one thing you have to keep in mind is that once you sell the cash you could put and you actually, let's say end up buying the stock because the stock price goes below the strike price before expiration, what you can do is then collect the dividend. In this case, they're paying on a monthly basis, as you can see, the monthly dividend company, and they're very consistent. They've actually been raising their dividends quite often. So worst case, you know, you sell a cash secured put. In this case, we're going to sell. Um, it's at 62. Let's try for 4,000 shares and see what comes up at a strike price of 60. 
So in this case, we're going to be putting up $240,000. Once again, you'd want to be more diversified if you had that larger of a portfolio. This is just for the sake of the example. If we're doing this all the way out to October 18th, again, a little more than a month at $60 a share, we're looking at a bid price on 4,000 shares or 40 contracts divided by 100 is how many contracts we can sell. The bid price in this case is going to be 45 cents. So in this case, we're not looking at quite as much. Now, if we were to take that strike price at 62.75, let's say we go for 62.50. Now we're taking a look at a pretty good amount of income. See how much? See how much that changes. I'll do that one more time. So if we do the 60 dollars strike price, we're looking at based upon the current bid price of the option, you know, seventeen hundred dollars roughly. If we go down or up to the 62.50 strike price, now we're looking at $4,574. So you can see the difference in cash flow. You can see the difference in how you're being credited this income to your account. And you're taking more risk in this case because you're basically agreeing to buy the stock at 62.50. The price is at 62.75 up until October 18th. So this has more than a month after expiration. Now let's say realty income goes way down in the in the meantime. So let's say it goes from 62 down to 58, 56. Now you own the stock at 62.50. But here's what you can do: the stock's trading at 56, 58. Turn around and sell a covered call at 60 or 62.5. You're buying the stock at 62.5. That's the thing to keep in mind. So the downside is if, is if realty income is trading down here, if you're selling an option at 62.50, you're not going to be making as much on the option. However, one thing to keep in mind is that you can also get these dividends while you wait. So assuming the stock price doesn't recover initially, you can still collect these monthly dividends, roughly a 5% yield. So there's trade-offs and downsides, but the idea is we want to have continual cash flow rolling in. Additionally, this is why it's important to be diversified. So if you're doing this against 10 or 15 stocks, if you sell a cash secured put at 62.50 and the stock goes down to 55 or whatever, now you have to wait for it to recover before you can sell another, you know, let's say a call option at $62.50. The idea is, is that if you're diversified with 10 or 15 different dividend stocks, you can do this against. That even if one of your stocks goes way down, you're not going to be hurting because here we go, right? So let's say it goes down to 56, 57, but then realty income bounces back. So now it's trading at $60 a share. Now we're going to go ahead and do this uh, call option thing. Okay, so now it, let's assume we've already bought the stock, 4,000 shares. Now we're going to go ahead and do this call option at the same strike price, break even on our actual shares, but then we're also going to collect another $5,000. Keep in mind, we've already been collecting those dividends after we got long on the cash secured put because the stock price went down. But then it came back up, we entered this trade, locked this in, got another $5,000 out of it. So this is once again, roughly over a month out to expiration, October 18th, today's the 10th, so let's say five weeks. Do 10 of these trades per year. You know, if you were able to do a trade like this 10 times in a year, how much would you be looking at? You'd be looking at 57000 So, I mean, it's just a matter of making this work um, and doing this against different companies that you believe in, right? So if you want to do a cash secured put against a stock, ask yourself, would you be comfortable owning the stock at that price? If I'm doing a cash secured put at sixty-two fifty, just below where this price is. You know, I could switch the expiration date too. It's only 10 days away to September 20th and I'm still getting 50 cents in this case. Well, maybe that's the better deal because it's only 10 days out to expiration. And what's gonna happen is the theta or the time value is gonna decay on this option. So perhaps this is the better option, pun intended, right? Um, but $1,974 is what we're receiving in this case for 10 days of work basically, if you think about it that way. So this is a big if. But if we were to take that, you know, 365 divided by 10 days, if we were doing this consistently 36 times a year times, let's say, $1,900 after commissions per trade, now you're talking roughly 70. Okay, so the idea is we're continually doing this. And you can also do this on a weekly basis for a lot of stocks. You can even do this against the SPY, the S&P 500 ETF, um, if you wanted to have a beta of one where your volatility is basically even with the market. They even have weekly options to where, you know, depending on how much you're able to invest, $548 per share. So if you wanted to do this on a quarter million dollars on the S&P 500, you're looking at $548 per share. You know, you, you 456 is how many shares you can buy divided by 100. You can do a maximum of four contracts in that case. 
So this is another way you can do it, right? So SPY, um, strike price. Now they're not, you're not going to get the dividends in this case, but you can still do this. And if we look at the expiration up until today's what? Tuesday, Wednesday, today's the 10th, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday expiration at, uh, let's say, you know, 547, 326, four contracts, right? So we're going to do 326 for the bid price is where it's trading at. We're doing 400 shares. We're getting 1300 bucks by Friday, right? So that's the idea too. You could also extract this on spy options to where you're going to be doing this um, on a weekly basis. Some, a lot of people do this. Um, and the idea is, hey, you're sticking to the performance of the market. Now, the downside is, just like with stocks, if you're doing this against the index, what happens if the index has a large decline very quickly? So we haven't seen that. But if it, if, you know, we have a double top, let's say the, the S&P does not go up next year. Let's say there's a downtrend. Well, now, you know, you might be stuck in a situation where hopefully you can get out of it, right? If you're doing these weekly options with the SPY, but the, it's the same concept. So you're selling a, a strike price of 547 right now. It's at 548. We could even do a 546 if we want a little bit less risk. 287 in that case, we're still getting over a thousand for less than a week of work. So, and, and you're only putting up, in this case, 400 shares at a strike price of 546. So you're even putting up less than the anticipated amount, which is great. But it's all about making this work. I mean, if you have more, obviously the better, right? Um, but we can make this work with maybe less than we think. Um, we can take control of our income in our portfolio if we do this correctly. And so the idea is maybe we can actually retire with less, work with less, instead of having to, uh, you know, find some arbitrary number. People always say, oh, you need this much to retire. You need $2 million, $3 million, some ridiculous, crazy amount that most of us, I think, very well know. You know, maybe if you save a lot in your Roth IRA, okay, you have some good, you know, investments that turn out. But the thing is, a lot of people don't have two or three million bucks. And yet you'll hear a lot of retirement professionals say, oh yeah, that's how much you need to retire. But what if you don't have that? So the idea is we're going to be working with less, producing more income, and then hopefully we're going to be rolling some of that back in. You know, assuming our expenses are low enough in retirement, we can take that and roll it back into the Roth IRA or whatever it is to get additional income down the road if we do this correctly. But there's a lot of factors to consider, and you must consider your own risk tolerance and investing goals as well. So I hope this was kind of a uh, good, entertaining video. Um, gives you an idea of what's possible, whether right? it's with dividend stocks like Rio Tinto or Realty Income, or against the S&P 500 itself with SPY options. People are doing this a lot. Um, you know, It's just a matter of how large of a portfolio do you have to work with, and then can you actually make it work um, is, is the question. So... Thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you guys. And uh, thank you so much for everybody who supported this channel, by the way. We're over 2,000 subscribers and growing. So hit that subscribe button if you like content on dividend stocks, cash flow, you know how to make income from various investment opportunities in the markets. We love to talk about that stuff. So thank you so much once again, and we will see you in the next one. Take care.